Hello everybody. Today's mission is to take these beat up, wrinkled, scuffed pair of uh, Alan Edmonds Mora. I believe these are the Mora 2.0 double monk strap shoes and bring them back to life. Uh, they've got a multitude of problems, including uh, the sole guards, the rubber protective half soles that I put on are kind of peeling back off. So I'm going to kind of address that as well. Okay, so let's go. Hello, everybody. It's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Here it goes. Here they are completely finished up. Okay, so let's see what we're dealing with here. So this is a pair of, uh, I think it's a Mora 2.0. And, yep, Mora 2.0, I can... I can see it in there. Uh, so uh, the owner of these shoes wears them, obviously has enjoyed them, and he says he does use shoe trees. Uh, a lot of scuffs, scrapes on the toes, edges of the soles. Now here's something I want to address. I do uh, um, like to have honesty and integrity with you guys, and like I said, I leave in my ditty there, and I am not a professional, because I'm not, you know? So what I've used in the past to adhere uh, the protective half soles, because remember, I, I started, putting stuff up there. I had like, you know, a couple hundred followers and, uh, you know, I wasn't like trying to become some expert in this field or something. And, and, you know, I know a lot, but I'm not an expert. In other words, don't just take what I say is gospel because uh, um, I'm going to try and show you when things do work and when things don't work. What I've used in the past is this, uh, DAP Weldwood Contact Cement. What I've recently switched to is this. And I know for a fact that a lot of the professionals use this master all-purpose cement, all cement by Petrosino. And even just for my limited use, I believe this is much stronger. It's a much better adhesive. So look, you can see, you know, this is peeled off quite a bit. Um, I have had spots, usually if I ever have a, uh, um, a part of the protective half sole peel off, it's here on the outside, you know, where your foot flexes, at the tip of the toe, or one of these two back corners. But I've never had a pair where they peeled off this badly. So there's two guys that I know that have this problem with them peeling off. One of them I know he fidgets and he'll kind of like, I'll watch him at the office and he'll roll his foot like this, you know, and he'll do this. And then when he gets an edge, he'll play with it on the carpet. The other factor, and I'm just stating this factually, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. That's why I'm not using any names. Um, both of them are heavier set guys. Um, so I think that's also part of the problem because if when you're bending or, or turning, you're putting a lot more force on this. Um, so that may be part of the issue as well. So, and here's probably a third thing. What I've done in the past is, like you can see here, I avoided grinding into the leather. And um, uh, I don't think that's the proper way to do it. I'll link below my, one of my last videos. I think the proper way to do this from watching professionals is they'll grind off the leather surface and break that surface. The reason I avoided it in the past was I just didn't want to be that invasive. You know, I felt like, well, if the rubber sole didn't work off, I could peel it off and still have the original. That was one reason. A second reason is because I noticed wherever I would cut or sand the leather, this stuff would soak right into the leather and almost disappear. What I figured out from talking to a, um, a couple cobblers is they'll put multiple coats on. It's almost like you get a primer coat of glue than, you know, a second or maybe even a third coat. So I don't think I was really approaching it with the right philosophy. So for whatever that's worth, okay? I think what I may do is, uh, I'm debating in my mind right now, I may peel these back off. Um, and if I'm gonna peel them off, I might as well replace them. Um, you know, sand the soles, uh, kind of do it the right way. I need to completely clean these things. I'm gonna use, instead of saddle soap, I, I picked up something else different. I picked up some Le uh, Lexol all-purpose leather cleaner. Uh, something important I'll talk about, this is pH balanced is uh, one of the things it talks about, okay? Um, why is pH important? Well, what degrades leather, uh, heat is the enemy of leather. And another thing is the enemy of leather is um, the pH level, you know, whether it's uh, acidic or basic, okay? Um, a lot of the leather is actually made of collagen. You know, collagen is an elastic fiber that gives your, your, your skin the stretchiness. And those two things, uh, the wrong pH um, and, um, you know, heat will actually damage the leather other times. So we want to get, um, you know, actually conditioners that are pH balanced in that way, okay? Uh, heel tacks obviously have been worn through. Those should have been replaced a long time ago. This becomes kind of a problem, by the way, when these heel tacks, oops, you're keeping my fingers clear there. When these heel tacks um, get this far gone, you almost really, I should say when the sole wears that much, you almost really can't replace them now 
because now you're trying to stick it onto a rounded surface and there's going to be a gap there. So, um, and he's kind of getting close. Can you see there? Probably should replace the heel top list too. He's close, but the, it, it doesn't actually really need to be replaced yet. But if I don't do it now, I think he's going to wear into the, into the heel base. What you have to remember with Alan Edmonds shoes is there is the, um, I'm not, I, I don't know what it's made of. It's not pure stacked leather. To me, it looks like composite leather. This layer right there, there's a layer of rubber in there. And then there's the top lift. You want to replace them before they hit this piece of rubber. This first piece of rubber is nailed um, to the uh, heel base and the sole. Okay. This top layer is not nailed. Okay. So you do not want to wear into that first layer of rubber. So first thing I'm going to do is get a nice tight fitting pair of shoe trees. Um, and these, what size are these? And you can see here, by the way, they'll usually tell you somewhere in the shoe tree what the actual size is. That says, uh, made in USA. So this is medium. No, I, I guess I'll show you. This is going to be too small. This shoe is 11 and a half E. Okay. If I put it in there, you see it's not stretching the shoe. That is just obviously too small. Okay. Here's another style. Style I don't, the thing I don't like about this is the narrow, uh, narrowness of the heel compared to the wideness of this one. I like the wider heels. Uh, and you can see here the size, they have a different system. It's this number six, which I think is gonna to correspond to uh, an extra large. That's better. There we go. And that's the way you wanna store shoes. If you have a pair of shoes that have started to wrinkle and bow, just putting shoe trees in like that and just leaving those in there, um, just leave them in there like that for you know a few days or a week or whatever. We'll really, really straighten them back out. Okay. Um, I'm also going to take off the other heel tack here. That's driving me crazy. And I um, think I'm leaning towards just going ahead and peeling off these rubber protective half soles and starting over. Um, I do need to pull the nails out though. These uh, have a third nail in the middle. Can you see it there? And I need to dig that out as well. He's probably had these on here. I, I know he wears these shoes quite a bit. Um, I'm guessing that he's had these on here for probably about a year, year and a half. But um, you can actually see they're really, um, yeah, they're getting a little thin actually. You know, you can see they're worn through the grooves and I can feel it's fairly thin, but they still had some life left in them. So I guess that's how you can judge is whether the grooves are gone or not. Oh man, but they're not really flat. That's the, can you see that? ball of the foot, you know, and the toes are making indentation, so the sole's not really flat. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. I think maybe what I'll do first, I think I am going to go ahead and replace 
I'll replace the heels. By the way, look at this. Look how terrible that is. This is the outside of the right shoe. Um, that right there is from hitting the brake and the gas. Um, and what this person does, I've watched him, is he kind of rolls his foot to the side. Uh, you know, I think when he's at cru on cruise control or something like that. Um, or you know, when he's not touching the foot of the brake and he just kind of flops his foot over to the right and this part touches the rubs on the carpet. So, um, But I guess first I'll do the mechanical repairs. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace the top lifts. Here's the tool I like to use to get top lifts off. I'm going to try not to hammer, not because, you know, you may have delicate ears or nothing like that, but because everybody, uh, not everybody, but his family members sleeping upstairs. getting pretty thin there now again I'm not an expert on this but there's I do know a little bit about this a heel balance so this is the shoe uh, that I've not messed with the factory shoe so watch if you basically I'm gonna push the heel so the heel is flat and see how it tips up a little bit that so there's a little bit of an angle if you can see on, on the heel so now the heel is perfectly flat um, it, it's hard to give you a measurement I mean that's probably popping up about three sixteenths of an inch if that gets much more than that, in other words, if this is more than a few degrees, then what you have is when you put your weight on the shoe, you feel, you know, the sole has to kind of bend and that gets uncomfortable. So, well, I'm just double checking as I'm taking the new heels that I have, which are ever so slightly thicker. I mean, I'm trying to find an area of these that are unworn, but you want to try and get heels that are the same thickness as the old ones. These are close, very, very, very close. Um, and then, because otherwise if it's much thicker, then you'll have a problem and that balance will be off. So I'll have to see. I mean, it is, I think, I think it's going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a new version of the same rubber protective half soles that were on there. For my shoes, I've been using these. Uh, I can't tell you what the brand is because I buy these from eBay. And they're not, they don't really have a name brand on them, but as you can see, they're quite a bit thinner, but they don't have that pattern on them. I don't really like this. You know, these, you can kind of cut them at any angle you want and they look really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and use these though for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's already a line. There's already an imprint from the old one of these. Number two, you can tell by the condition of these shoes. I mean, no offense, but this person's standards aren't that high, you know, so I'm more concerned with the durability, which these will be more durable than these. And uh, also because, like I said, there's already a line there from the old one. So I'm going to take this up to the garage. First, I'm going to cut a line there to get a nice little edge to recess this down into. Then I'm going to take it out of the garage sand here. I'm going to sand the heels down a little bit as well. Now, usually I'd have to put the sole on here, draw a line, you know, with a pen or pencil. I obviously don't have to do that because it's very clear where the line is. And I've said this before, this part does take some skill. I would not advise everybody to do this. In other words, what I'm trying to say is you can cut yourself.
forgot to videotape it, but I did hit the heels. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Um, I, I tried to sand a little more at the front and the back, kind of, you know, reduce that heel height, make sure I don't have a problem there. You can tell because I got closer to the nails there than there, but they're nice and flat now. I think I'm ready to glue. I'm gonna put two coats on the leather soles um, and probably one coat on everything else. setup here this is a, a back door to you know the house and I open it up to get some air in here because this stuff you really the pros would have a vent put down okay, here we go. I have a press I can take these shoes out to, but I can actually wear these. They're not my size, but I can wear them. So I'm gonna just put them on my feet to press them. really good once I get that extra glue off of there. Trim the edges and the heel breast. I got that terminology from Steve Dudocklin. Anyway, B does leather work, Steve. I learned that term from him.
clean that up just a little bit right there on the sander. Damn. It's not, you see that shape isn't right there. I'll have to, ah. A little bit too flat right there. Doggone it. Okay, so my uh, battery died. I had to find a uh, charger to plug it in an extension cord, but uh, so I didn't film it. What I did was I put some tape on here um, to protect the finish. I didn't want to have to redo this finish. It's like there. I'm going to have to re-dye it. That's easy enough, but I didn't want to refinish this entire edge. So I took it out to the belt sander and it's not perfect. You see there, that angle right there is off. Just from about there to there. But it's pretty good. I'm getting better. I'm not a master at this. I think this one's pretty awesome. That one's really good. And now where we're at is they're functionally back up to speed. Now I can focus on the cleanup. So Lexol Deep Leather Cleaner. So what this stuff says is, uh, step one, shake well. Apply on a clean Apply on a clean microfiber cloth or Lexol sponge. And I'm gonna use this cloth, I think it'll be fine. Uh, step two, for a deep clean massage into your leather. Step three, wipe away uh, foam and dirt using a damp cloth towel dry. To complete leather treatment, follow with Lexol deep conditioner. This is uh, Tanner's Bun from National Mother Company. Sapphire cream polish, and this is I'm going to use uh, medium brown and 37. spot. Alright, time to put 
couple minutes to set up. I love this part. Yeah, but we're getting there. Now it's time for a little bit of mirror shine using the Sapphire mirror gloss. I'm not going to go crazy with this because the owner's not going to keep them up. side of the welt. Like I said, I did not go crazy with the spit chunk, so there's not going to keep them up. I did clean off the center part of that sole there. It's called a gentleman's notch. It's on the inside of the heel, so it doesn't catch your pant cuff. I think that came out pretty nice. Edging, I'm very happy with that. Okay, so let's see what we're dealing with here. So this is a pair of, uh, I think it's a Mora 2.0. Uh, so uh, the owner of these shoes wears them 
obviously has enjoyed them, and he says he does some shoes. Now these look like decent shoes again, don't they? And there's that spot. See, it's pretty much gone. It's a little indentation in the leather where he scratched it, but... Not too shabby, huh? All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, being here with me along the journey. All right, wish you guys an awesome day, and God bless.